Now 250,000. Now I'm going to get 275. I'm going to get 275. Three. Now 300,000. Now three and a quarter. 325. I'm going to get three and a quarter. I'm going to get 325. Now half. Now I'm going to get 300,000. And hello from Dallas. We're right here in the, uh, the heart of North Dallas, Addison, Texas, just about, oh, about five minutes from my office. And welcome to the Mike McGavel Jones Show uh, as we uh, have another COVID-19 uh, production. Uh, we've got uh, Trelvis is back at the studio and, and we are at uh, Casa Jones or Honus as we like to say. Um, welcome to another edition of our program. We have uh, a, a bevy of things we want to talk about. Um, this past weekend, uh, of course, if, if you've been on Facebook uh, or been paying attention to any of our social media, uh, then you know that we have been fighting a little uh, uh, infirmity, a little problem, a little uh, deal with my ankles and feet the last week or two. And uh, that is starting to heal itself. And with a lot of prayers, I, I was uh, very excited that 350 to 400 people decided to take the time to write a nice note and show some love and, and send prayers out. And I, and I do believe that, that they are working and uh, we're coming together pretty quick, a lot faster than what we thought. You know, uh, we uh, were anticipating six to eight weeks and I think it's going to be more like two to three weeks. And uh, I am able to walk, although gingerly, I'm not climbing any mountains right now, not trying to get on any rocks that might throw me off, but uh, certainly doing much better. And I'm very uh, thankful for the doctors at Presbyterian and Plano and then the orthopedic surgeons um, over at the sports center here in Plano as well. So uh, that's been great and I, I appreciate that. I wanna start off with some uh, kind of sad uh, information for those of you who uh, are not following along or have not seen my post over the weekend. Uh, I have a, a dear friend up in uh, Mark Tree, Arkansas, which is uh, probably about 30 minutes or so outside of uh, Memphis, Tennessee. And uh, Tom Rhodes, uh, I've always known her as Tomboy. Uh, Tom Rhodes, uh, as you may have discovered, uh, discovered her father had been murdered over the weekend and in a very uh, ghastly, um, very brutal attack. Um, Mac was 87 years of age. Uh, I don't know a whole lot more. Um, Tom and I have um, sent some emails and texts back and forth, but I know she's been very busy with family and they're trying to find out exactly what happened. And of course, they're trying to find out who did this dastardly deed uh, that would hurt an 87-year-old man and ultimately kill him. Um, just about it, the one of the worst things that you can imagine. Um, and the fact that it happened in Mark Tree, which is uh, near Jonesboro, Arkansas, uh, Arkansas State University. And, you know, you just don't know. You know, it's a, a busily traveled area. So you could have been someone uh, locally, but it could have been someone from Memphis. Uh, I don't know. But it's sad thing and so I would just ask that we send our prayers and thoughts and condolences out to Tom and her family because they've had a very very difficult two or three days and um, we will continue to pray for her and the family every day uh, and let's just hope that they find the perpetrator that did this uh, did this deed. Um, I'm supposed to be on an airplane right now I was uh, heading out um, actually I'd be landing in Washington DC right now because this is the week that we do the annual Ducks Unlimited Capitol Hill uh, dinner and auction with the congressional members, the House members. Um, this I've been doing it now for, I don't even know how many years, probably uh, going on 10 years. And uh, unfortunately with the COVID-19 and the coronavirus, uh, they the EU has suspended all of their uh, fundraising events across throughout the United States. And this of course was a great opportunity for uh, Ducks Unlimited to shine uh, in the Capitol uh, and promote their uh, conservation efforts for duck ha habitat and also the wetlands. And so we, uh, we hate that we're missing that. Uh, that's going to, would have been tomorrow night. And uh, usually when I go up there, I try to visit some of our United Country offices. This time last year, I was um, uh, in West Virginia at a place called uh, Paw Paw. And uh, that is a location uh, I'll talk about here in a little bit, but uh, that is a um, 40 plus acre track of land with an airstrip and a hangar and uh, a couple of residences. 
it's a really neat spot on top of a mountaintop in West Virginia. And uh, the gentleman that owns it, his name is Carl. And uh, we have that listing on that property. So I was there a year ago and it seemed, I can't believe it's been a year, but it has been. And uh, if you're interested in a, a lifestyle property uh, that includes a landing strip with a hangar, uh, with, with improvements, got a lot of improvements on that property. If you'd be interested in that, please uh, call me uh, or send me an email or a text and I'll give you my detailed information uh, at the end of today's show. Um, we've also got some other uh, things going on in the, the business. And then you probably noticed that since last week, uh, last week we, we were highlighting uh, some things on the wall. Uh, we, did, we did highlight the uh, 1960 inaugural season of the Dallas Cowboys original pennant uh, that we have on the wall here at the Casa. And then of course uh, the Hall of Fame or the uh, Ring of Honor I should say, of course, all these guys are in the Hall of Fame, I believe. Uh, pretty sure they are. Uh, Texas Stadium, if you see that little caricature of Texas Stadium, that was actually a, a page of season tickets. They're perforated. You can tear them apart. But each game represented uh, one player from the Ring of Honor, which is around the building, uh, was highlighted on those tickets. So it, they're, every single one of them is autographed from uh, uh, Bob Lilly, the first um, – he was the first draft pick. Since we're riding in the middle of the NFL draft, this is kind of appropriate that we would mention a Mr. Cowboy. He was deemed Mr. Cowboy when we drafted him. He was the very first draftee of the Dallas Cowboys here in uh, Texas. And then it goes all the way down to uh, a couple of blanks that we didn't have tickets for, but a couple of gentlemen that had just put in uh, the ring of honor when I, I got this piece. Um, uh, we have... Uh, Tex Schramm, of course, who's one of the architects for the early success of the Dallas Cowboys, was with the team for over 30 years. And then also uh, Bob Hayes, Bullet Bob Hayes, who was the, the fastest man um, that was uh, being measured at the time. He uh, was an Olympian. He was a great Olympian and a great Dallas Cowboy receiver. And the original number 22 before there was, uh, before there was an Emmett Smith or anybody else. So anyway, that's a neat piece. And then we'll talk a little bit about Elvis and this piece over here, and then the golf globe that goes on top of a gas pump, we'll talk about that as well. I want to start off today, uh, I really enjoyed uh, reading from Sarah Young's Jesus is Calling. Uh, Jesus Calling, enjoying peace in his presence. Um, I really um, find solace in this, and you know, the one thing that I've discovered that by being home as much as I am, um, I'm in a different place mentally. You know, everything's slowed down. Since I'm not on an airplane, you, you know, prior COVID-19, uh, I pretty much was kind of like that proverbial mouse on the, uh, the little thing that spins around in circles. And every day I'd get up and I knew I had to be on an airplane or I had to pack a bag and, you know, I'd have a second bag packed. And, you know, really what, quite frankly, you know, all my friends were always saying, Mike, you need to slow down. You need to smell the, smell the flowers and and uh, take it easy, and you don't need to work this hard. There's no reason to work this hard. Well, you know what? Uh, in 2019, I've discovered they're exactly correct, and uh, I plan on cutting way back on the travel. Uh, I don't want to travel as much as I did, and I've really enjoyed the time spending with uh, my family here, and Kinsey, and Landon, and, and uh, just being able to be a, we haven't been uh, nearly the family that we should have been, but we're taking time now and we're going to continue to do that. After this is all over, I'm not going to fall back into the trap that we had before. So I would like to read this from, uh, from Sarah's book. And uh, it's from earlier this year. So I'm, because I'm, I'm going to read something else at the end. Uh, I want to talk about uh, uh, being still, which is uh, consistent with what we're talking about. Last week it was choices, and this week it is being still. Thank me for the conditions that are requiring you to be still. Now, this is really interesting because I wasn't looking for this. I literally opened the book and this is where it landed. And it just seems appropriate. Um, do not spoil these quiet hours by wishing them away. Waiting impatiently to be active again. Isn't this something? Some of the greatest works in my kingdom have been done from sick beds I've been in one of those the last few weeks. And prison cells. Haven't been in one of those. <laughs> Don't want to do it. 
Instead of resenting the limitations of a weakened body, search for my way in the midst of these very circumstances. Limitations can be liberating. Trelvis, can you not, can you believe how this is coming out here? I, I find it amazing that I opened the book and it lands on this and it is exactly where we are right now. It's serendipitous almost. It is. <laughs> Limitations can be liberating when your strongest desire is living close to me. Quietness and trust enhance your awareness of my presence with you. Do not despise these simple ways of serving me. Although you feel cut off from the activity of the world, your quiet trust makes a powerful statement in spiritual realms. My strength and power show themselves most effective in weakness. Well, I can't, uh, and that's um, from Zechariah 2.13, Isaiah 30.15, and 2 Corinthians 12.9. Um, I'm just telling you, this is, uh, I just find that very, very connecting, very, very much on target for what I'm dealing with right now between the health issues and COVID-19 where we can't go anywhere. So I, I wanna make the most of this, um, this period of time, whether it's over with, whether we wake up in two months and everything's cool and we're back to normal, uh, or we wake up in six months, because quite frankly, we don't know. We, we uh, Governor Abbott, of course, uh, acknowledged yesterday that we were going to open up some channels, some business opportunities are gonna be opened back up. Um, uh, they're wanting the economy to be stimulated. I know the president is anxious to get the economy going. I have some trepidation about that. I am concerned about opening up too many channels and people dropping their guard and then allowing themselves to get too comfortable uh, to the point that they get, get us all in trouble again. Because even with these uh, limited openings and availabilities, we still have to be smart. We still have to, uh, you know, we, we are required to wear the face mask uh, here in Dallas, uh, I went to the I went to the grocery store yesterday, and uh, dutifully wore my mask. And uh, it was it was kind of interesting though when you came across someone who didn't have a mask, because then you're just kind of thinking, or anything. They didn't even try to do anything, and you're just like, I think my immediate response was like, really, you're not wearing a mask. You're not. You can't get a handkerchief. You. Hey, where are all these people that wear hoodies all the time and cover the entire faces up? I think it's time to break the hoodies out, cover your face, do whatever you got to do. But I found it amazing to be at Tom Thumb Foods yesterday in North Dallas off Preston Road and saw it, to see anybody without a mask. The other thing I found quite interesting is most of the staff at the grocery store wasn't wearing a mask. And uh, I, I'm trying to figure that one out, Travis. I don't quite get that. If, if you know, these are the, these are the, frontline people that we're supposed to be praying for and hoping that they don't get sick and they're not wearing masks. I, I, I cannot imagine being a retailer or an employer and not requiring them to wear masks. You know what? I went to the store yesterday also myself. I went to Kroger and um, I, I had, I guess, the exact opposite experience. Most of the store personnel were wearing masks and I saw a few of the customers not wearing masks. Interesting. Mm -hmm. Interesting. Well, it may be the difference in stores. You never know. Uh, I do believe, as well as you do, uh, demographic matters. Uh, a lot of young people just think that, you know, there isn't a problem. It's all good. I, I, was, uh, I was up in Gainesville the other day, and I drove by a parking lot of a bank, and it was filled with young people. There's probably, and they look like they'd been on a trip, uh, maybe 20 of them, and they were all standing all together, all grouped up, all visiting, all laughing and having a big time. I don't know. Uh, I guess, you know, you hear people all the time. You hear about these people that they don't watch the news. They don't watch the TV. Uh, it might be time they break out the TV because um, I don't want them infecting me or you. Um, yeah, I just found that quite interesting. So I'd like to talk about some properties that we have uh, with United Strategic Client Services here in Dallas. 
that we are doing in joint venture with some of our United Country offices and our United offices uh, around the country. I was asked the other day, uh, someone said, uh, are you with United Real Estate now? And I go, well, I've, I've always been with United Real Estate, whether it's United Country Real Estate or United Real Estate, our urban brand, we are, we are basically, we are two different uh, types of real estate but we are all on the same page and we try to work together. The whole idea is to coexist and offer unique properties in both segments. The United Country brand being 95 years old, distinctive lifestyle properties, recreational properties, mountain, ranch, land, um, equine, uh, anything to do with the country. Main Street, we like to talk about Main Street. Uh, we feel like we are the Main Street of rural America. So whether you're in uh, you know, uh, any of these, uh, jo Jonesboro, Arkansas, uh, wherever you happen to be. Um, we have United Country in Fort Worth. And we have United Country. We probably have 30 offices or so in Texas. And then our United Real Estate Group, which is urban, and it's a different model. Uh, the very first office being in Dallas, uh, where my office is, uh, where I would normally be. And then we are in Houston. We're in Austin. And uh, we are in uh, at DFW over in the uh, Grapevine area. It's uh, United Real Estate DFW. Um, so right now, just to give you an idea. So if you're a, a United country or United Real Estate <clears throat> or any other real estate company, uh, I would like to preface that by saying any company can work with United Strategic Client Services. It is not limited to only United country folks. Uh, the metrics are different. The cost is different. Uh, but if there is another company out there, uh, Brand X, and they needed the assistance of a major uh, auction company or a real estate listing company that is separate and apart from just being a uh, traditional franchise, um, they can certainly access me uh, if they're in uh, North Dallas or if they happen to be in Fort Worth or Houston or New Orleans or wherever. So right now, I want to talk about a, a property uh, very typical of what we do. Uh, we have a great friend out in Colorado. His name is Mike Craig. Uh, he, he has a property that we um, are assisting him with selling right now. We've worked with Mike before, um, three or four years ago, it's, I think maybe five, when I first uh, uh, started working with Mike on a winery property that we had with Gary Hubble uh, out in uh, Western Colorado. And uh, we ended up doing a very large equipment auction and personal property and guns and things that were at the location besides the winery. And, but Michael has uh, 180, I believe it's 180 feet of uh, shoreline on the, uh, on a river, what's it called? Conejos, Conejos the Conejos River. And um, it's a 7,400 square foot executive home, lifestyle home. Uh, in Colorado, it's called in, in Firestone, Colorado, and uh, it's a six bedroom, seven bath, um, and it's quite the place. Um, Travis, you'd probably like it. You know, you could probably live with a six bedroom, seven bath. Um, I, I think I could struggle through it. I think I could make that work somehow. <laughs> I just, I just like saying Conejos. <laughs> <laughs> it's a great name. Uh, but this is a super property that's, uh, um, Trent, is this one being offered at auction or is it? Uh, it's, auction June 11th. it's going to auction on June the 11th. So right now you could buy it uh, prior to the auction if you wanted to make a preemptive offer or you can wait until uh, the auction takes place on June the 11th and, and you can try to bid on it and win it at that time. And then... Uh, so good luck to Mike on that. And, and Michael Craig, uh, great guy, always checks in. He's always on the Facebook. He's always, uh, he is also our lifestyle guy down in Costa Rica. So if you ever are interested in buying property in Costa Rica, um, island property, uh, coastal property, um, and then of course mountain property and things out in Western Colorado near Grand Junction out in that part of the country, that's, uh, he's your guy. Um, and, uh, of course we have Gary Hubble, Gary Hubble works out of, uh, that area as well. And we have that property between Aspen, Colorado and, uh, Grand Junction. 
and it's called Battlement Mesa. I'd love for you to check this place out. It's called Battlement Mesa. The website is buybattlementmesa.com. And uh, that is being handled by our good friends, Gary and Jake Hubble, our United Country office with Colorado brokers and auctioneers. Uh, pretty much on the phone with Gary uh, just about every day. He's uh, our regional guy that works with SCS and uh, very supportive. Uh, you know, it has only been about two years ago that we were in Duchesne, Utah. And uh, Gary was our feet on the street and our broker of record over in that area and our auctioneer. Uh, you know, I actually called the auction. This is back when Mark Whittling was still with us. And, uh, but I called the auction. We sold 120 properties in one day in Duchesne, Colorado. So if you are an investor or you're a, um, a developer that has uh, lots, maybe unfinished lots, maybe you have finished lots, but you don't have any buyers and, or maybe you have retail or a mixed, a mixed bag of that. Uh, I can tell you right now in Duchesne, we, we probably got the nicest, longest uh, reference letter we've ever received. I received two letters in the last 40 years that really stood out. And one was from Mike Craig uh, out in Colorado. And then uh, the, the, the lady that owned the Duchesne properties in Utah. And uh, it was just phenomenal. And, uh, but to be able to sell 120 properties in a day is pretty phenomenal too. So by, by battlementmesa.com, um, that's going on right now. And that is uh, going to be about 25 to 35 unique properties. Uh, the bulk of the, it's most of the unused properties in that town. That also includes retail. It's going to include uh, elk hunting land. It's going to include some golf lots. It's a, a, a full mix. And all these properties are for sale right now. If you go to that website, you can learn more about it. And then uh, whatever hasn't been sold, um, we are taking to auction towards the end of the year. Uh, Gary is also working on something called the Olathe Duck Club. This is 49 acres in Colorado. This is exquisite land. Uh, for It's strictly for duck hunting. You know, there'll be, there's no, uh, because of the uh, uh, easements and, and the uh, conditions that have been placed on the property, um, there, you know, you can't build on it, but you can hunt on it. And, and if you're into duck hunting or lifestyle, uh, getting away, uh, going to the absolute greatest duck hunting location in Colorado, this is probably your ticket. So uh, we appreciate Gary and Jake handling these properties and, and Jake does a phenomenal job. Jake is a great uh, marketer and, and he really does a great job with the drone. Uh, we have all these uh, great tools that we have now that, you know, used to, you, you didn't have available to you. So we have them now. We were talking about Paw Paw, West Virginia, and this is a um, this is a lifestyle uh, aviation property with the landing strip and uh, the hangar. It's on 68 acres, 68 acres, and uh, this is through Steve Bomarito. If you're a United Country office, you probably met Steve over the years. He's in West Virginia at United Country Home Place Properties, and we have that listing right now and uh, we're hoping to get it under contract. But if something doesn't happen in the near future, I'm sure we'll take it to auction. And, um, but it is a gorgeous property. It's just beautiful West Virginia. You know, it's right out of the, right out of the songs by um, John Denver when he's singing about, you know, uh, country home, take me home. This is exactly what we're talking about. I don't know if a lot of people know this, but I know there's gonna be some United Country people on and I'm sure some of our management team, but you know, uh, the song Take Me Home Country Road by John Denver has kind of been our kind of been our theme song with United Country for many, many years. Uh, if you're not familiar with United Country, you need to check us out. We have a um, we have a uh, an original sales catalog from 1925 that is in the Smithsonian Institute in Washington, D.C. We were the very first uh, real estate franchise company to promote through a catalog, just like Sears and Roebuck, but it was lifestyle properties. And uh, we have a reprint of that, that we release every once in a while and give out. And I try to keep extra copies of it, but it's phenomenally interesting. I probably ought to break one of those out here before too long and just read you some excerpts of uh, what the land costs and what all you got with the uh, farm that you bought 
uh, or the, um, the weekend place. Uh, also, we have a property right now. This one is through our United Real Estate office in Aiken, South Carolina, and our friend Brenda Daly. Uh, Brenda is our great broker there. She handles that office. And uh, it's called, um, it's on a road called Hatchaway Bridge Road. Um, the website for it is going to be www.sc, uh, South Carolina, abbreviation, equestrianproperty.com. SC, equestrianproperty.com. That'll give you a location to go to check out that property. I did mean to mention also on the, um, back to uh, Mike Craig's property in uh, Firestone, Colorado. I want to just mention to you um, that website for that six bedroom, seven bath uh, lifestyle home, 7,400 square feet is www.co, meaning Colorado, cowaterfronthome.com. Check that out and, um, and uh, just check, check those things out right now. I want to talk about uh, a success that we had in the last six weeks. You know, while the uh, COVID-19 virus had taken over the world, we were still closing properties. In fact, United Country, uh, United, uh, United Country Auction Services, the auction division, according to our friends up in, in, um, in Kansas City, uh, from what I understand, uh, we, we had a record-breaking first quarter which of course is great news. We love that. And uh, I'm, I'm always happy to see that we're doing well, but they had a great first quarter. Now we may slow down because of things right now, but you know, it hasn't been, but about three weeks ago, we closed on a property that you've heard about on this program. And that was the um, uh, Johnson County, Nebraska, Lakeshore Marina Bar and Grill. And this was a property that uh, I was called in on uh, to take a look at by John Cahill. John Cahill is an agent. Uh, the broker up there is Barbara Dawson and they're with our United Country office in Elwood, Nebraska. And so it took a little while to get this thing pulled off um, and we did sell it post auction. And uh, so congratulations to John Cahill and Barbara Dawson on the sale of uh, Lakeshore Marina Bar and Grill. You know, we've, we've had quite a bit of success with with marinas and uh, so that was good to have that close in the last two or three weeks and get that um, get that in the book so that's all I have to say about that right now uh, I do want to show you just as a thought for those of you that are hanging out with us today uh, this show is going to be shorter than most we'll probably be through in less than an hour but if you um, if you receive gift cards I don't know, random thoughts today um, I get a lot of gift cards, get a lot of gift cards at Christmas, get them for your birthday. Guess what? Travis, do you use your gift cards all the time? Um, I, I don't. I actually have a, a, a part of my wallet where I stick them, so I don't use them all the time. Yeah, yeah. Well, I can tell you right now, I'm, I'm terrible about just putting, you don't, you don't think of them as money. You just stick them in your wallet or put them in a drawer, or put them in a container, and then you come across it, and it's four years old. Yeah. And they've either they've either uh, depleted in value, or they have no value. Um, so anyway, so a couple of days ago, Mackenzie goes, uh, Mackenzie being my daughter uh, of 26 years, she says, Dad, we, need, we ought to use some gift cards. And I'm thinking, that's a great idea. I think if I give if I give a gift card to somebody else, it's more likely going something's going to happen than if I'm responsible. So anyway, here's just a, a few of my little gift cards. Okay, a little gift card here. I have, I decided to get plastic covers for my gift cards. So we used one the other night. Um, where was that for? Outback. Outback Steakhouse. So my father had given me. Uh, an Outback Steakhouse uh, card and, or two. And so we used those the other night. And then at Christmas, Mackenzie gave me a men's warehouse card. So I'm going to use that as soon as I can actually go back in the store. Here's one for IHOP. And you know, because my, my father loves breakfast food. 
and then this has got some data on it. Um, cotton patch, you know, I, I like cotton patch. I just, you, if you want to gain weight, go to cotton patch, okay? Because it's, it's feel good home cooking. Uh, Pappas Restaurant, which is a part of the Pappas family, if you've been to Papa Do's or Papa Cita's or Pappas Brothers Barbecue or Pappas uh, Steakhouse, you know, Pappas Steakhouse is, is uh, rated by some as the number one steakhouse in Dallas. Now, I, I, I don't want to hurt my friend's feelings up the street here at Three Forks because the folks at Three Forks did call me, offered me free dinner when I was in the hospital. So I'll have to, I'll have to say Pappas Brothers is not the number one steakhouse in Dallas, Texas. We have that up the road, and then we have one over at uh, Albernay, and Albernay is a good friend of ours. And we, so let's just leave it as a toss-up between Albernay and uh, the folks at Three Forks. That's very, that's very political of you, Mike. Well, you know, I'm known <laughs> to be that way. And then, of course, if you don't have anything else to do, you can go to one of the Pappas restaurants. And, and this is for any of the Pappas restaurants. And then we've got a Kirby Steakhouse uh, card here, and you can use that uh, at a Kirby's. And, and uh, of course, they also have Mickey Mantles, and they have that in Oklahoma City. And also the casino up the road, Windstar, they have a Mickey Mantles and a Kirby's in there. So there's places to go. Of course, you can't get in there right now. And then, of course, our friends at Chili's. Um, that's an easy one. But I would highly recommend you go dig out those cards right now. And, 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 and if you do it and you save yourself 50 or or $100, then you can just drop me a note and say, thank you, Mike Jones. How's that? All right. So here's a brochure. If, you, um, if you're interested in what we're talking about today in regard to United Strategic Client Services, which I am the broker for, and have been since the beginning. Uh, if you are interested in taking advantage of the six or 700 offices that we have of United Country and United Real Estate, we have over 3,000 websites and we, we have built, maintain, and control and manage over 3,000 real estate and asset related websites. Nobody else can say that. That's just not, that's just not the way it is. We've, we've probably got a billion dollars worth of infrastructure with our company. And, uh, but anyway, this, uh, of course, the print's going to be in reverse, so just pretend like you can't see that part. But whether it's an expensive, uh, you know, um, Virginia-style colonial home, a horse property, um, a waterfront, a lake, ocean, uh, water community, commercial property, uh, we are bringing, I mentioned last week, we're bringing on a young man, and uh, he is a phenomenal commercial uh, broker here in Dallas, and he's going to be joining me, and we're going to be doing some exciting things. In the next two weeks, we're going to make more announcements about United Strategic Client Services than we ever have before, and we also have some interesting announcements to make about uh, the auction schools and people that want to go to auction school, because I've been meeting with Lori, and I've also been having conversations with the Myers in regard to worldwide. So between America's Auction Academy here in Dallas and our friends um, that we're in partners with, uh, up at Worldwide College of Auctioneering. Uh, we will be making some announcements on our upcoming schedules and what we're doing. A lot of people are wondering what's going to happen uh, because of attendance and being in the room with people and when are we, are we going to reschedule those dates? And uh, of course we have classes in Texas, uh, Iowa, Colorado, and then we have some other exciting things we're going to talk about. But as you can see, uh, if you have the interest in living well, it with a nice pool like that one right there. Travis, I can see you out there by the pool. And, uh, and then these are classic case studies of what we have already sold. This is a luxury mountain home uh, near Ridgeway, Colorado that we did last year. Twin Oaks wedding event venue. That's 100 acres down uh, south of Atlanta, Georgia. Uh, great piece of property. We closed that last year. And then the Snyder Hunting Duck Club. This was a hunting club. Uh, in Colorado, we did with Rich Schur, and uh, this property, um, uh, the way this came about is, interestingly enough, four or five years ago, when I was in, when I was in Washington, D.C., doing that auction for Ducks Unlimited, the owners of this property were there, and they were all regional directors and executives with Ducks Unlimited, and they, they saw me do that auction. They walked up to me after the auction, said, hey, we want to talk about selling our duck club in Colorado. And within two weeks, we had it on the schedule and we sold it at auction. Um, this is the Utah land rush. That's the 120, 120 properties that we did. 
And then also here's a commercial property over in Georgia that we sold as well. And so if you have anything like that, and then you can just kind of see um, that kind of home right there. And, uh, but if you are in the need for a real estate brokerage uh, or an auction company, someone that handles prestigious properties that has a resume, we certainly would love to talk to you and I'll be happy to drop one of these brochures either in the mail uh, or we can send it to you digitally. Um, and one of the other things is this piece right here on the, uh, which you can see the little boxes, that is actually the process that talks about how we operate. You know, from the client consultation to the research, the distribution uh, and the channel, uh, marketing campaign development, uh, down to the client approval for the marketing, uh, the campaign execution, uh, marketing reporting, and then the property sale. And then, of course, at the end, uh, if we spend 20000 30000 50000 100000 however much money we spend on behalf of our sellers, uh, we give a full report on where that money was spent. Uh, right down to the brass tack. So you know you know what's going on there. Okay. How we doing, Travis? We doing okay on time? We good. We good. We are just good. I was I was uh kind of contemplating me laying out by the pool getting my spray tan on, you know. <laughs> <laughs> oh well I can I can see that happening. I can see you being out by the pool uh, like Puff Daddy. Uh, with about three or four young ladies putting the putting the <laughs> suntan lotion on you. <laughs> I like that. I like that. <laughs> well, it's either Puff Daddy or the Stay Puff guy. What does he Puff Daddy? What What are some of his What are some of his tag names? Uh, P Diddy. P Diddy. Uh huh. Brother Love. Brother Love. <laughs> Brother Love is, is one. Uh -huh. Diddy is another. Diddy. Uh huh. Diddy is uh, a, another. I guess that's better than Fitty. <laughs> <laughs> his brother from another mother yeah, yeah. yeah people don't know that i am i'm totally in tune with this music thing you know uh, uh, yeah it's, it's yeah. A, one of the hidden traits of mike jones yes one of the hidden, hidden talents. yes that's right people, people would never know that i was so connected to the rap world but uh here we are um <laughs> so i do want to mention um if you are an outdoorsman and you uh, are committed to youth and you would like to support a group that I'm involved in, uh, I would love for you to contact me because I, I'm going to be doing some fundraising for a group called the Outdoor Christian Ministries. Outdoor Christian Ministries uh, specifically uh, raises money to take youth uh, on hunting trips. And while the youth are on hunting trips, they're also bonding with people who are of the Christian faith. And so it gives you, them a chance to get out into the, you know, to the uh, outside world, get away from the television and all of the gaming and all that stuff and, and, and lets them see what the world's like outside on a river, uh, either fishing or hunting, doing something uh, that is not inside. And now that we, we, you know, people are actually spending time together, it's a great time to take kids hunting and fishing. And uh, so I have, I just got off a phone call just about 30 minutes before we started the show. And so we're, we're, we're considering doing, in fact, we have a meeting Thursday night I'll be involved with. Um, and we're talking about doing a possibly a virtual a fundraiser uh, in the short term and then doing our regular uh, dinner and auction probably in the last quarter. But, if, but we're looking for donors uh, and we're looking specifically for donors, and I don't care what level it is. I mean, we've got donors that give $5,000. We've got donors that give 2,500. But what we do is we, we if they are our fundraiser, we will be selling hunts. These are hunts that are being given to us um, by a ranch. Uh, in a few cases, we actually have to buy them, but that's okay because if we pay 2,000 or 3,000 for it, and it's worth $5,000, then it's a win-win because we're getting these kids out on uh, farms and ranches to do some things that are good for them instead of bad for them. And um, I, my philosophy is if you're gonna put a gun in a kid's hands, let's do it hunting, uh, not in the city. So there you go. So Outdoor Christian Ministries, if you would like to uh, sponsor a hunt um, or be a part of one of our raffles, or you'd like to register, uh, please give me a call if you'd like to donate and I'll 
connect you with the, the appropriate person. Uh, my cell phone number, and you're welcome to call me anytime if you'd like to help us. As you, a lot of people know, I work with Ducks Unlimited all over the world. You know, we, we do their national, uh, uh, their national event, uh, which would be their convention that's going to be in Orlando. I'm already lined up to do that. Um, I'm not sure that we're going to get to do it uh, this year. They may move it to the end of the year. I don't know. Everything's still up in the air. But like with Ducks Unlimited, you know, I do five or six events for them. And um, so if it involves hunting, fishing, or kids, uh, I'm, I'm all in. So if you'd like to uh, sponsor some youth hunts, call me at 214-906-5265. And Travis, you can post that. Uh, for me, and you can also send an email to me, and that's M Jones Auctioneer. That's singular auctioneer. M Jones Auctioneer at gmail.com, and I'll be happy to follow up with you if you'd like to make a donation. I'll send you to the young lady that handles that. Uh, we sent out some uh, letters in the last few days asking for donations, and we picked up about I think sixteen thousand uh, dollars in short order. And we do want to make sure that this ministry continues on. And uh, the only way we can do it is, is and, and it's a volunteer staff. I mean, most of our people are either pastors or are um, in the ministry, and they're not drawing a paycheck. So this is a big volunteer organization, and it's one of the reasons I, I like being involved with it. So if we can help them, I would love to do that. Um, so there's that. And then we, we're, I'll tell you right now what's happening with all of our fundraisers is uh, we're getting ready to... Uh, do a big event for, you know, I do the Bishop's Dinner now here in Dallas, and we are adding on uh, Fort Worth. Uh, the Fort Worth Diocese has asked me to do their auction, and we'll be doing that before long. And then I just received word from Austin uh, this morning that the Dell Foundation is having us come back again this uh, coming year, uh, first quarter. And so we're very excited about the future and what's going to happen. And I think, you know, Travis, I think the thing that is most important now is that People are now forging together for good more now than they have in many, many years. As divisive as these people have been in Washington, D.C., the two parties, uh, the regular people, the people like you and me and Trent and the folks in our office and the pre people that are operating as realtors and agents and brokers with United Real Estate and United Country Real Estate and we're just regular people trying to make a living. We don't have the big house back home. Uh, we don't have uh, the Lear jets, you know. We're just trying to make a living. And so I think it's, it's wonderful that the people are coming together, uh, that we're getting ourselves realigned. Now, those that do know me or don't know me, and I'm not gonna get on a big religious kick right now, but I will tell you, things, things do align according to the Bible. The Bible, you know, you can, people that make fun of the Bible or Christians, I have a real problem with that. But I'm just telling you right now, what's going on right now is it, it is uh, biblical in proportion. And so when you start hearing key days or key numbers of days, I, I uh, my good friend um, from high school, um, uh, Vicki Mahaffey Martinez, who is uh, in Lubbock, Texas, and a lot of our friends in Houston, um, I've known Vic for over, gosh, 45 years, and we went to high school together, and, and, and her husband, Waldo, uh, they are very, he's a doctor out in Lubbock, and, and they have a beautiful family, and one of their daughters is a nun. I mean, they're very, very connected to the Catholic Church. They give a lot, and we were just talking about this through text and email. You know, we, we haven't spoken in years, but we still communicate. And, and she was sending out some information about the relationship with 40 days. If you go back and look at the, the various things in the Bible and the things that relate to time, 40 days comes up over and over and over. And I don't, I don't have my notes in front of me to talk about it, but I just want you to be thinking about it. Uh, there's a lot, of, uh, a lot of things that are connected to our faith. And uh, if you're not of, of the Christian faith, uh, hopefully you have some some type of faith. You know, we understand that there, the world's full of different different religions, and we get all that. But you're going to have to find yourself, and you're going to have to align with something. And uh, it's it's way better than not having an alignment with anything. And and I'm I'm very appreciative that I I have uh, 
uh, been able to make my way back uh, because there was a period of time that I'd gotten away uh, from a lot of things that I believed in. And, and uh, so the, the, the fact that, you know, I can talk to you right now about Jesus Christ and, and uh, coming in with the Father and, and uh, putting my trust in the Lord and what's going to happen in the future, it really matters to me. And if I can influence one person, if I can help one adult or one child uh, to take advantage of that relationship, because it, it, um, it, is your, it is your future. You want it to be your future. You want to go to a better place when you leave here. And uh, all you have to do is give yourself uh, in the blood of Christ. So now I'm going to talk about these things in the background. Trelvis, I know you have great... Uh, you're not supposed to say lust, but I, I know your mother would have great lust for this Elvis <laughs> thing right here. She was a huge Elvis fan. I mean, she huge. had Elvis purse and everything. Well, I, I'm not going to get into all the details about what I used to do when I was a kid in relation to Elvis. I'm going to tell you a sad story first. Uh -oh. um, yeah, I'm going to tell you a sad story. So, you know, I just, uh, I just bought a little farm up in Gainesville, and uh, it sits right on a a walking trail or a, a walking track that was built by the city of Gainesville and in honor of the uh, Medal of Honor recipients, the folks who either gave their all or received the medal uh, for their bravery and what they did to take care of their, their uh, compatriots and whatever, they may have given the ultimate sacrifice. But this trail uh, runs all along my property and I, and I love this place. Well, right in front of that property, is where I lived in 1966, 67, and 68, okay? And um, there used to be, and those, those little, these little railroad, this used to be on the Katy Railroad. So for those who uh, remember the Katy Railroad in downtown Dallas, there used to be a Katy Depot, which some, uh, some very uh, unscrupulous developers dozed down in the middle of the night. It was a historic uh, building. And so you've heard of the Katy Trail in Dallas. Well, that's the Katy Railroad. Well, the Katy Railroad run, was this walking trail that is in front of my property. And so there is uh, the two little bitty houses. They were 100 square foot shacks on the railroad tracks, as I like to say. My mother and I lived in one, and my grandparents lived in the other one. And uh, these were very poor little houses, but we didn't realize we were poor. And uh, of course, things change over time, and you, you move on. But one thing about it, and I was sharing this with somebody the other day, we may not have had very big houses, but they were immaculate. They were, they were well taken care of. The grass was always cut. The, the bushes were always trimmed, and it looked good, even in poor times. Well, there was a storage building behind, behind our little shack on the corner, and uh, my grandfather said, hey, let's go to Bowie Trades Days. Let's go to Bowie Trades Days and, and just go hang out. We'll park out there and we'll just sell stuff and, and uh, make a weekend out of it. And I said, okay, that sounds great. And so we did. Now, before I, we went, I went to the uh, storage building and I, I gathered up some stuff that I, I knew we didn't need and we needed to get rid of. So I just loaded up a bunch of stuff and, and took it to Bowie Trades Days. And uh, so... It, all this stuff is on the back of the pickup and on card tables. Back in those days, you had card tables were a big deal back then. They weren't made out of much, mostly cardboard. And you'd have a card table and you'd put all stuff on there you're going to sell. And this little girl came up. She was so excited. And she bought, uh, she bought a whole, whole group of things that we had. There's all, all one particular thing. And I just remember she, she bought all these things. And I think, I think she gave either $9 or $10 for all of it. And, uh, and uh, you know, Travis, the, the, the last thing you want to do is come home and tell your mother that you sold her entire Elvis Presley 45 Sun collection for about 10 bucks. And it was all the original. Uh, this is back when you had 45s and albums that went into sleeved books. And uh, these were in mint condition. She'd had them since she was a child. I don't think my mother ever really liked me after that. And, uh, and uh, I never mentioned Elvis and I never mentioned records around my mother because I was about nine years old when I did that. And uh, that also was a valuable lesson. You never, you never sell anything or do anything with things you don't know about. And I didn't know 
what that meant to her. I think she literally died a thousand deaths. Now my mother, bless her, is still alive today, but I'll bet you money every time she hears, that's all right, mama. Uh, I bet she just, she probably just, no, she's not, she's not proud of Mike Jones. Yeah, I don't think I would have went home after. <laughs> well, I didn't know. Well, you didn't know the scope of what you did. Yeah, no, yeah. Well, she's going like, where are my records? And I go like, what are you talking about? And, and, <laughs> So, yeah. That's a good one. I like that. Yeah. It's, it's a true story. Yeah. It's a true story. It's a sad story. So <laughs> I want to publicly apologize to my mother right now uh, while she's still uh, up and going and doing well. And she, she lives in Gainesville and she, you know, she lives in the same house she's been living in for the last 40 years. And, and uh, but yeah, I, I apologize to my mother for selling those. And, that, and maybe that is the reason that she feels sometimes the way she does about me every time she hears an Elvis song. Um, I bought this piece. Uh, this Elvis Presley original poster, uh, Elvis on tour, if you've ever seen that movie. Um, but I actually bought that from a collector uh, at Barrett Jackson. Uh, a lot of folks know where Barrett Jackson is. And I bought that piece at Barrett Jackson Classic Car Auctions uh, probably 15 years ago, somewhere between 10 and 15 years ago. Um, but I, I love that piece. And I'm, I'm, I am still a big, huge Elvis fan. And, and I, you know, like many people in my generation, I know exactly where I was when I heard that he, he passed away. Uh, and I have all the, all the newspapers from uh, that the, uh, the Memphis newspaper printed because you could get reprints. And so uh, I still have some Elvis records and, I'll, you know, big fan, big fan. I've got a lot of friends in Memphis, Tennessee with DU and uh, some auctioneers up there uh, that, are, that are big, uh, big Elvis Presley uh, fans. So anyway, that's where that came from. I want to talk about this piece right here, and it's a little bit hard to see because there's a reflection coming off the computer. This is probably, you know, I've got a couple of pieces that mean a lot to me. This is one of them, and I, I purchased this from a, a friend of mine who's a collector, um, and it, you, you don't get the full uh, feel for it with that reflection, but if you ever saw the movie How the West Was Won, it's one of my absolute favorite movies of all time. And one of the reasons is because it had an all-star all -star, uh, cast. You know, uh, when you look at it, it says, and, I'm, and this is for the older folks, the younger folks aren't gonna, aren't gonna get it, but Carol Baker, Lee J. Cobb, uh, Lee J. Cobb had a historic Hollywood career, um, Henry Fonda, Carolyn Jones, and for people that don't remember who Carolyn Jones is, Carolyn Jones was Morticia Adams on The Adams Family. So if you ever saw The Adams Family, she was the mother. Um, Carl Malden. Carl Malden was on a TV show, The Streets of San Francisco, with Michael Douglas before he became a famous uh, movie star. Uh, but Carl was in a lot of other things too. Carl Malden was a big deal. Gregory Peck, uh, George Papard, Robert Preston. If you ever see the movie The Music Man, uh, he was he was in in that. He was in a lot of movies. Robert Preston, one of my all time favorites, um, for sure. We had uh, Debbie Reynolds, of course, everybody knows who Debbie Reynolds is, who's, you know, uh, she played uh, Unsingable Molly Brown. And uh, we had uh, Jane, Jim, uh, James Stewart, Jimmy Stewart, of course, from A Wonderful Life. Jimmy Stewart, probably the quintessential American, uh, uh, he, he was just the all-American guy, you know. And not only was he that in, uh, movies, but he was that in real life too. You know, he was a, I believe he was a colonel in the, uh, in the Air Force during World War II. I mean, he was the real deal. And uh, of course, it's a wonderful life. You know, you can't go wrong with George Bailey. Uh, also, you had John Wayne and Eli Wallach, Richard Widmark, uh, Walter Brennan. If you remember, um, you can always Google these things, but if you've never seen an episode um, with Walter Brennan in it, you, you, you know, Walter Brennan was a hoot. He did a lot of Disney movies, but he, he was also uh, the patriarch on uh, The Real McCoys, which was basically a takeoff of the Hatfields and McCoys. And, but Walter Brennan, and, and Walter Brennan was in this movie. And I read a really interesting thing. I, I was uh, reading up on a lot of these people, and, and Walter Brennan was one of them that I was checking out on uh, the internet the other day. We have... Uh, we have Andy Devine, 
and Raymond Massey, look up Raymond Massey, you talk about a famous actor. Uh, you know, you're talking about a lot of these, a lot of these guys were classically trained actors going back into the 30s and 40s. And um, so anyway, uh, Raymond Massey was a big deal. Agnes Moorhead, Agnes Moorhead was the um, uh, Andorra on Bewitched. So uh, uh, Elizabeth Montgomery's character, uh, that's her mother on that show. And Agnes Moorhead's in this movie. Um, Henry Morgan, Henry Morgan, uh, Colonel Potter from uh, MASH. You have uh, Thelma Ritter. Thelma Ritter was a, was a great character actor, and uh, th you ought to check her out. She was in uh, quite a few John Wayne movies, too, which everybody knows I'm a John Wayne freak. Um, and it kind of goes on from there. Uh, Spencer Tracy was also in this film, and there's two or three other folks. But this is a neat piece. And the reason that I like it so much is because it, it's signed by four of my favorite actors of all time. On the top right here, it'll be right here. I'm having to do the weatherman thing. I'm pointing and it's opposite of where we are. But right there, that's signed by Jimmy Stewart. And so that means a great deal to me because I'm a huge Jimmy Stewart fan. And then uh, below that, uh, well, actually, to the side, which would be in the part you can't see very well. And, and I will show this another time sometime on a stand where it does not have a reflection. But uh, Henry Fonda signed that piece. And then we have Eli Wallach. Eli Wallach became very, very famous uh, by being a part of the Spaghetti Westerns with Clint Eastwood. Eli Wallach was always kind of a nasty, uh, a nasty little guy. And he was in lots and lots of Westerns, but he was always a bad guy. He was never, never, never a good guy. And then finally, my favorite of all time, John Wayne. And John Wayne signed that piece. This is an actual uh, program from the opening night of How the West Was Won in Hollywood. And uh, if you go to Hollywood, uh, there, is a, there is still um, the Cinerama. Cinerama was where they did lots and lots. Of course, Grauman's Chinese, they got a lot of the original openings. The Cinerama did a lot of them as well, and Cinerama could handle more people. So it is a it was a Metro Goldwyn Mayer uh, production, one of my absolute favorites of all time. So now I want to talk about the Gulf Gasoline Globe, and, that, and that's how I'm going to wrap this thing up. And then I've got something I want to read, and uh, we're right on time right now, I think, Travis. So this Gulf Globe, we call them globes. Uh, you hear people call these different things. Uh, you hear them talk about uh, petrolina, uh, meaning petroleum uh, marketing pieces. Uh, you hear um, a lot of different terms. Sometimes it's gasoline, whatever. This used to be, at one time, it was um, a globe that was on top of one of the old pumps. Um, not the ancient kind of pumps, not the old 1920s and 30s. This was probably going to be in the 50s, uh, maybe the maybe the end of the 40s, the 50s, or early 60s. This is an original globe. Both um, of the plates are in both sides, and this uh, was up in the attic uh, in Gainesville, Texas, at the Gulf Distributorship. We called them. Uh, we called the distributor there uh, a jobber, um, but up on the usually up on the the building, it would say distributor. Um, the gentleman that used to run the, the Gulf distributorship in Gainesville, and it was for Cook County, uh, was Jimmy Leonard's. Jimmy Leonard's was a good family friend, a uh, great friend of my, uh, my grandfather, and, and um, Jimmy Leonard's was well known. And uh, he had two sons, and uh, I can't remember the oldest son's name right now, but he had a younger son, and uh, he had set two globes back. Uh, he set two globes back. They were different. They were not the same. He put one back for his oldest son and one for his younger son. His youngest son was Mike. And uh, so, and we had the same name. Well, uh, it was just strange, you know, the way things happen in life. Um, Mike was killed in a motorcycle accident. And uh, I was at the distributorship one day and Jimmy's showing me what he had gotten down. and. Uh, well, as you can see, uh, it's here. And so, you know, I was very, uh, I was very touched um, emotionally, still am today, because that globe uh, should be with Mike today. And I guess in a way, if he's here, he sees the globe. But I always thought uh, very, 
I thought what a wonderful thing it was that Jimmy uh, allowed me to end up with this globe um, because it represented his son and he evidently liked me and I appreciate that. I've got a lot of things like that over the years where it was something that meant a lot to someone and they, they said, I want you to have it because I can't think of anybody that would care for it more, care about it more and take care of it for as long as you have it. So anyway, this is a, a testament and, and just an homage to Jimmy Leonard's, the former distributor uh, and jobber for Gulf Oil in Gainesville, Texas, Cook County, Texas, and, uh, and Mike, his son. So God bless Mike and God bless them both. They're all gone now. And as we reflect back, Travis, I'm going to, uh, I'm going to read one last thing, if you don't mind. <sighs> Do not be afraid, for I am with you. Hear me saying, peace, be still to your restless heart. No matter what happens, I will never leave you or forsake you. Let this assurance soak into your mind and heart until you overflow with joy. Though the earth give way and the mountains fall into the heart of the sea, you need not fear. The media relentlessly proclaim bad news. Isn't that shocking? For breakfast, lunch, and dinner, a steady diet of their fare will sicken you. Instead of focusing on fickle, ever-changing news broadcast, tune in to the living word, the one who is always the same. Let scripture saturate your mind and heart and you will walk steadily along the path of life. Even though you don't know what will happen tomorrow, you can be absolutely sure of your ultimate destination. I hold you by your right hand and afterward, I will take you into glory. And I think on that, I'm going to call it a day. I hope you've enjoyed this episode of the Mike McGavel Jones Show. From Addison, Texas, just a uh, five-minute drive away from Lincoln Center, where we normally do our program. And uh, Trelvis, thank you for producing the show today. As always, you do a great job. Appreciate it. We'll be back next week with a whole new backdrop of things to talk about. Some of it you'll like, some of it you may not. But at the end of the day, you'll know what I'm thinking. And for everybody that's been a part of this one, God bless you from Dallas, Texas. We'll see you next time. We bid you adieu.